You are looking at a deciduous forest. Within a deciduous forest, there are forest layers. Each of these layers has different animals that it inhabits. So these animals require these layers in order to survive, almost like a mini habitat. Today we're going to look at the different layers within a forest and the animals that live within each one. Generally, these forest layers are pretty easy to identify, defined by the plants that grow there. Each layer is a different level within the forest, but sometimes these layers become a little bit more confusing, especially when plants like buckthorn start to take over the layer and create a more dense habitat. Buckthorn is an invasive species that does not belong in a healthy forest ecosystem. So the layers are all defined by the plants that grow there and how tall they are. The tallest of the plants create the canopy, which is closest to the sun. Below that are trees that make up the understory. And then below that is the shrub layer, only about 10 feet off the ground. The herb layer or herbaceous layer are plants that grow about a foot or two from the ground, but then the final layer is the forest floor, and those are the plants and the soil on the bottom of the forest. Each layer is critical to the survival of the animals that live there. The canopy is the tallest layer, and the trees that grow there grow closest to the sun. This is where birds sing because they can project themselves further when they're higher up in the sky. This is also where squirrels build their nests. They use things like leaves and branches and bark from the trees to compile together and build their nest in the branches of the trees away from predators. This keeps them safe there. Insects like the cicada not only use the canopy as their source of food, they also use this as a source of calling for their mates. Being higher up in the canopy allows them to project the sound that they make better, so they have a better chance of finding a mate. The second layer in the forest is the understory. This layer is just below the canopy. These are still pretty tall trees, but they don't quite reach as tall as the canopy. Many of the animals that live in the understory use the trunks of the trees and the branches of the trees as their home, such as the woodpecker. You can see on this tree trunk that the woodpecker has created several holes. These holes are not only holes for their nests, such as this hole here, but they also make holes because they are looking for insects beneath the bark. Insects are beneath the bark of the dead trees, not the living trees. They are acting as decomposers of the standing dead trees. Another common resident of the understory is the raccoon. Raccoons spend much of their time up in the understory, usually within a hole in the tree trunk or sometimes they're just hanging out in the branches, looking down at what's happening below them. The understory is also the home for the great horned owl. This offers an excellent spot for the owl to be able to look for its food and to communicate with each other. Listen carefully for the higher pitched female and the lower pitched male. The next layer down is the shrub layer. This is the layer that stands about 10 feet off the ground, and these are bushes and shrubs that grow in the forest, as well as some younger saplings. Many shrubs are berry-producing plants, so this offers the animals an 
opportunity to find their food here. Like the blue jay. Blue jays eat acorns, but they also eat berries. And black bears are omnivores that eat primarily plants and berries, as well as some smaller animals. Another resident of the shrub layer is the white-tailed deer. The white-tailed deer browses on the twigs and branches of the shrubs, keeping their head higher up so they can be more aware of predators. You'll also find evidence of the white-tailed deer in the forest floor as deer beds. This is an area where the deer has laid down and matted down the foliage, so it's evident that the deer was laying there. Another sign is the deer trail, which shows the route that the deer take to make it easier for them to get through the forest, especially if there is a predator nearby. You can look on the deer trail to try to find evidence of the deer walking there, such as their tracks or their footprint in the dirt. The next layer in the forest is the herb layer or the herbaceous layer. This layer is plants that grow up from the forest floor about a foot to a foot and a half. It gives the animals that live there an opportunity to hide and take shelter. Some of the animals that live in the herbaceous layer are predators like this fox. Most of the animals in the herbaceous layer are prey animals. So they use this cover of the plants that are growing to keep them hidden from the predators. Rabbits are one species of animal that lives in the herbaceous layer in the forest. Another species is the gray squirrel. They also live up in the canopy as we saw earlier. And the wild turkey is another species that uses the herbaceous layer as its home in the forest. Finally, we have the forest floor as the bottom layer of the forest. This is different depending on the types of trees that grow there, but in all cases, it offers shelter for animals who live beneath the soil. The chipmunk is one species that lives in the forest floor. They create a series of tunnels underneath the ground and they collect nuts and seeds to store in those tunnels for them to eat over the winter time. Another animal that lives in the forest floor is the field mouse or the wood mouse. This animal is very important to the predators that live in the forest. Mice are one of the most important sources of food for animals like the owl and the fox and the coyote. The other very critical thing that happens on the forest floor is decomposition. Decomposition is what occurs to any living thing that dies and eventually becomes dirt again. This happens from sunlight coming through the trees, from rain and water, from air, and from critters that live within these fallen logs and the dead leaves on the ground that are called decomposers. Decomposers are the critters that live within the fallen logs and things that have died and fallen to the forest floor. You can see evidence of these decomposers in this fallen log by looking at the little holes that are all along on the inside of the log and some of the things that are growing on the bottom side of the log on the soil. The process of decomposing is the fungus and the air and the water and all of those elements, along with these critters that live there, eat away at the material until it becomes like sawdust. And then it eventually goes back into the soil and becomes healthy soil for the forest floor to use as nutrients so that it can start to grow new plants again that have nice, healthy, 
vitamin enriched soils to use. Some of the decomposers you might find are roly polies, there might be a millipede, and there are always the earthworms that are found beneath the soil. All of these critters plus more help to break that soil down. Sometimes you may even find some spiders that are in that area because they're there to eat the insects and critters that they can catch in those logs as well. Many of these animals that live in these forest layers overlap every once in a while, especially when they are hunting for their food or looking for water. But for the most part, each of these layers gives the animals the space that they need so that they're able to create a home and survive in these forest layers successfully.